BoardGameGeek is the world's largest database of tabletop board and card games with more than 140,000 titles listed at the moment. It's a big catalog of games, but it is not comprehensive. In addition to new titles being released all the time, there are also older titles that people discover that are not added to the database. Who adds games to the database? Anyone. Any user can submit a listing for games. It is not always the easiest process because there's a lot of data on the site, may not be clearly marked, so I thought I'd give a video to explain how to do it because we want every game listed possible, especially if you are a designer or a publisher who has a game coming out, be sure to submit a listing to BGG because tons of people use the site. Our Google search results are pretty good. So when anyone searches for your game, they're going to hit PGG at some point. Ideally, your game is listed there. It'll have images and information and a rules file and videos talking about it, all sorts of stuff, but it all starts with a database listing. So. Let me show you how to do that. Ideally, you're submitting from a monitor or a laptop, not a mobile device, because that is not easy to use when you are submitting a game. You got lots of details that you'll be adding. What game do you want to add? Well, ideally, you have something in mind. If you're a publisher, you know what's coming out. You can submit a listing for that. Other people will just run across things. I ran across a listing for Home Farming Das Spiel from German publisher Cosmos at the beginning of 2024. It is coming out in the second quarter, but it had very little information, no image, not much there. I thought, let me hold off on creating a listing. Maybe someone else will do it so that I don't have to. I submit a lot of listings. I've submitted 4,800 listings, roughly three and a half percent of what's listed in the database, but I don't do it all. And ideally I don't do it all. Ideally someone else does because then the listing is already there. You can see whether a listing is existing because of course you can search for it nothing comes up with home farming but we also have a pending list so you can go to if you save this link items slash board game slash pending and you can see what users have submitted that hasn't yet been approved we have one primary admin who goes through submissions some other people do as well we often have to ask questions just see whether it's duplicating anything out there, whether, for example, Good Cop, Bad Cop 4th Edition should have a separate listing or whether it should be combined with an earlier listing. How different is Giant Who the Giant, uh, sorry, Guess Who the Giant Edition? Hmm, all the stuff that we sort of research to find out whether it should have a listing or not. And we don't see home farming dash spiel in here. So it's not listed, no one submitted it, so I can go ahead and do so. So. We, to do that, we click on a community. This is what users can contribute. There are some other things in the database as well that are not listed here that admins typically add. We don't have to get into that right now. Let's just go with board game. We have the primary name, Home Farming Das Spiel. Of course, this says Home Farming Das Brettspiel, but that's not what the box says. So let's go with the box. We have description. Well, there's a description here in German. I use Google Translate to make a rough translation. And then I put it in a document and I made a better translation from my point of view. Now we'll copy that and put it in here using the formatting for everything. Okay, except for curly quotes, which I despise. So let me get rid of them. They do look different. Short description. Well, here we're trying to give some sort of teaser to say what the game is. Get someone interested. Why would you want to pick this up? Ideally, we don't just use mechanisms to describe it, but more the feeling of the game itself, which is, can be difficult if you have not played the game. So you can just do something. There we go, including a typo. How accurate is this? Well, it does match what's shown here. It may not be as specific to the game as we might like. So ideally, someone will contribute a better short description over time. This is often what happens in the database where it gets some information and the people submit corrections. 
over time. It has age is eight and up, playing time about 50 minutes. It doesn't have a player count, but as I have learned with Cosmos, if you open the box up here, you, well, you can see in the upper left, player count is two to four. Playing time is 45 minutes. Hmm, okay. So let's go with that. Oop. And we'll tab past things. Category, what type of game is it? Farming? I think gardening counts as farming. Okay. It doesn't mention that it's cooperative in the description. I didn't even let you read the description. I just whooshed right past that. You can freeze the frame if you want and read that. Okay. What else do we have? I don't know the mechanisms. I don't know anything else along those lines. So I will leave them blank. Ideally, we have something to contribute for mechanisms. There's lots of different things and lots of people search for games in that manner but we don't have anything right now. There's no family. It's not a Catan game, a Carcassonne game, Ticket to Ride. It doesn't expand anything. It doesn't combine with anything else. Like all the smash up games are integrated with one another or Ascension. So they all get integrates with everything else, every other standalone games. It doesn't contain anything. That's often where a big box edition comes out and you put all the little items that are included. So when you have uh, I'm trying to think, for example, the Alhambra Grand Edition, whatever the latest Alhambra collection is, it's going to have Alhambra and it'll have these expansions and so forth. You list all that. Reimplements is it a new edition of something? So when you have Caverna, it was considered reimplementation of Agricola because Uwe Rosenberg talked about it that way. So we say reimplements. Designer. Okay, who are the designers? We can go look. Judith Rakers and Michael Kellogg. You can just copy information and post it in there. There you go. Judith Rakers. Not listed. Well, I'll show you how to do that later. But for right now, we can just leave it blank. We can come back to that later. All the other things, solo designer, artist, developer, don't know that information at the moment. Publisher, Cosmos. German edition. Okay. The idea, of course, is you submit as much information as you can. We've got little red stars here for things that are required. We have talked about revising this system. It has not changed in quite a while. It could be much more user-friendly, let us say. It's kind of expanded over time where we keep adding more things to it. We didn't initially have version listings at all when BGG started. Those were added in 2009, and then more things have come in over time where you add the box dimension, you add all sorts of other stuff, and release date specifics, and so on. Uh, dimensions, centimeters. This is a German release. It's gonna be in centimeters. Do not forget the decimal points. This is listed as millimeters, which it is not, 29.8. And seven four. This is required. There are some presets up top for common box sizes. So you see this medium square one is pretty much the same size. Not exactly the same, but close enough. Right? Standard two box amigo size. All sorts of standard sizes that publishers use, but we don't have that here. Or at least I can be more accurate. It's a German game. When is it due out? When's the release date? You don't have to have this information, but if it's listed, then let's go ahead and add it in. May 16th, okay? Ideally, you do use the pull down menu to enter this information. You can just write 16, 5, 2024 right here. But if you use the pull down menu, then that integrates with other things and will show the information better. It's not released yet. It's not debuting at Spiel. Nope. So don't have anything else there. It's not a pre order, right? If something is a pre order, you can tag it here. It's a Kickstarter item, and you can include the link, and then you put when it starts and ends. And that information will show up in the game listing. And what's more, if you do all of this information here, shown on the crowdfunding countdown page, 
then the game will show up listed on the front page of Board Game Geek in the crowdfunding countdown section. All of this information included in crowdfunding countdown is automatically generated based on information in version listings. So if you include that information, the project will be listed here as long as it meets the qualifications shown on this page. It has the information in the version listing. It has a representative image. That is an image on the front page. This is how you do that. All right, that's how you submit images. This is how you sub submit it for representative status. And then small details here. The project needs 50 backers and $1,000 in support. So we don't list everything. It has to have at least some minimal level of backing. Now that's it. We submit all that information. And you can write a note to admin. You know, if you want, you can say uh, details from. And you include that here. If you are with the publisher, if you are the designer, say I'm the designer. So that way we know that you are submitting accurate information. We trust that more. We look at those notes and then take that into account when we're deciding whether to approve game listings or not. Then submit it. There you go. You submitted the listing. I forget how quickly this updates. Is it already in the cache for pending board games? Mm-hmm. Home farming dash spiel. There we go. And look, I can revise it or withdraw it. As the submitter of this information, I can adjust it. So we may ask you for more details. You may get a geek mail note from the admin saying, can you supply more information? How do you actually win the game? Maybe you didn't give enough details and we want a little bit more. Can you tell us more? Sometimes we approve listings with very minimal detail, especially listings for games that we know are coming out at conventions. If it's a Gen Con release, a Spiel release, something like that, we know the game is coming because we can see it listed somewhere and maybe we'll just approve the listing anyway with minimal information because we know more information will come in time. Sometimes, if especially when the publisher submits a listing, we'll ask for more details. How do you actually win the game? It is in your best interest, of course, as publisher, to give people a sense of why they would want this game. So add a bit more detail. What's the hook? What's the setting? Why this game instead of any other game? As a casual user, not the publisher, you do, might not know, might not care. You just found something and want to list it. We'll do the best we can, get things listed but you can revise it or withdraw it. Maybe I am the publisher, I changed my mind, I will draw the listing, whatever you wanna do. Okay, now, can we submit a listing for Judith Rakers as a person, Judith Rakers? And I don't know anything about her. I assume she is an author, German journalist. And so, you can also just do this minimal information. Add three asterisks, uh, sorry, three apostrophes. That will create a bold listing. Home farming. There you go, home farming dash spiel. So that game listing has not been approved yet, but you can find pending game listings and link people to it. Now I can make a listing for Judith Rakers, submitting her here, and I can say whatever I want. I am Judith Rakers, if I am her, right? You can add more information. Ideally, she would know something more about herself than, than just this. And save. And now what? Now we wait. So we'll get a note in our geek mail when the listing is approved or declined or an admin asks for a revision or as in this case, I am an admin, I can log in and approve this listing and then show you how it looks. So let me do that. The more of these submissions you do, the easier they generally are because you know what's expected and you bring that information to the table and you run through it more quickly. You may notice there's a lot of stuff that I skipped over Ideally, of course, we want as much information as possible, but 
better some than none? Because if you don't submit anything, then we don't have the listing at all. Ideally, at least it's here as a building block, and then it will grow over time as people add reviews or comments or images or whatever. But it all starts with that database listing. I've now logged in as an admin and found the right link to see pending designers. You can see everyone listed here. You can see as admin, I can revise all of them. I can withdraw any of them, such power. You see who has submitted them as well. You look at things, once you, as an admin, do this a lot, you're like, oh, here's a publisher submitting this. I can trust their information because it's probably linked to a game that they are submitting. So, okay. We'll skip all that. Uh, here we go. 22 pages of pending games with 25 per page, I think. It's a lot. And you can see some of them have stuck around here for a long time. All right. Scroll. Whee! And here we go. The thing I submitted. You look at this and you say, this guy's a liar. He is clearly not the designer. Pending. So, okay, we know that we need to approve that. Everything else is here. See this release sort date down here? This is something that admins can add so that if you go to boardgamegeek slash gone cardboard, you can see a list of games and their pending release dates. This is a tricky thing that we do here with a release date because often people enter as a release date like Q2. What is Q2 when we put a release sort date? What is Q2, Q3 if it's coming out in the middle of the year? What is fall 2024? That is nothing. Never do that because fall in the Southern Hemisphere is not the same as fall in the Northern. No, don't do that. Just, you know, uh, September, October. You know, something like that. Specific dates. We have something like this. It's sort of use guidelines to make it as accurate as possible. So if this were the override date, September, October, I would put a release date of October 1st. So it'll be listed after all the September releases, but pretty much before every October release. So it just falls in that box. If it's Q2, it's going to be June 30th because that's the end of Q2. If it's just a 2024 listing, then the sort date, December 31st, 2024. It's all pretty straightforward and formulaic. It's just a bit of a pain because, because well, that's what it is. I approved the listing. I didn't even show you that. So here's another listing pending. We get to approve it. We give some geek gold. We decline it. We ask for information and send it back to the user. Okay. Like this one doesn't have year of release. Why not? Are they the publisher? Here's is 2025. Sometimes we just go in and fill out this information themselves. This is one of the designers. We would trust that they have the information correct. So now I'll add this in. We can adjust the descriptions. We do all sorts of stuff. Uh, premium advertiser. That's because I don't know. I don't know what that is. I am not involved with advertising, but I guess that means something. I'm not sure what. Okay, but I can go to the web page because now it's approved. And here you go. Judith Rakers is not listed because she is a pending designer. If you look at full credits, she is not listed either. As an admin, I can look and see that she is pending. And see up top, it's pending. I can go to the view in the queue where it's sitting here. We have this thing as well where we want to sort people properly by the last name. So you go to the listing, you do a sort index. You can do all this manually as well. It's a bit of a pain, but you can do it. Right? If you open the admin window here, here's the sort index to show what they're being sorted by. You count that over, eight, eight characters, we got an R. So it's going to be sorted by R. Super. And reload this. She is now no longer pending. The listing of names is given in alphabetical order, so K comes before R. There we go. We can force someone to be primary. If, if it was Judith was the main designer on this and Michael was like an 
helper and it's indicated that way, then we can toggle Judith to be higher. Cosmos is the originating publisher of this game. It's been listed nowhere else. No one has heard it, released it before. Cosmos will be primary. We can make categories primary. We can make a mechanism primary. There's all these things make primary so that when we go to a listing, if for example, oops, we just go to Carcassonne because it's always a good example. Hans and Gluck shows as the primary publisher and there's 35 other people. But we want to indicate who the originating publisher is so that if you like the game, you're like, okay, maybe I'll look for more from this publisher. They are the ones responsible for this. Uh, I saved the image before, so now we can upload the image. Choose a file, there we go. Adding a game. Upload and because I'm in admin mode, I can view this right away and approve. Users cannot do that, sorry. And now I can link it to the version. I can categorize it as the front of the box. I can make it the representative image. It will the first image linked to a version will automatically be made. The representative image so I don't have to do that if you go to the version listing right now the image is already in place you see all this information here go to the game the image is up in the box there we go what the background image will be filled by whatever image has the most thumbs and is in the game category right uh, game uh, sorry, game gallery, not people, not creative. It's in the game gallery, has the most thumbs, and isn't the representative image. There we go. This is all set. It's very basic, but it exists. It's live on the site. Let's go. Everyone, sign up. Home farming das Spiel. Maybe it's for you. Hopefully that's enough to get you started. If you have a game on your shelf, you find it at a used game store, you are publishing something and you want to submit it. Ideally, people who are submitting the game, they have a copy in front of them. So we know it exists. They know it exists. They can submit accurate information. If you're a publisher, typically you want to submit a listing when the game is 98.3% complete. That's our totally arbitrary exacting standard. The idea is that you are submitting a game where maybe small details of it will change. Maybe you don't have a final cover yet. That's fine, go ahead and submit the listing. Maybe you're still tweaking some of the numbers. You're adjusting things. You don't have final wording on all the cards. You haven't actually written the rule book yet, but the game design itself is locked. Cool, go ahead and submit a listing. Ideally, you want that listing to be a good representation of what the final game will be. You want someone to look at that listing and know that when they play the game, that's what they're going to get. So if you're not locked in yet, if the description is going to change, the setting, the gameplay, whatever it is, don't submit it yet. Maybe you add in a solo mode. That's okay. Submit the listing and then submit a correction later. Maybe I should talk about that. Just one second. Let me show you how that works. Back at our game listing, I've logged out of admin mode just to make it what a user would see because there's often little extra things that an admin sees that a regular user would not because we have tools to do things. But if you wanna edit a game page, you click on the edit button in the upper right hand corner, you can submit a correction. Maybe you find out this is actually for five players, not for uh, this, they added a solo mode. This actually has been moved back to 2025. You can do all these things. You can adjust the name. This actually, uh, sorry, it should be home farming two words, right? Whatever it is, home framing, very good. It's actually, yes, you are framing at home, not going to an art gallery store or an art, st art store, yes, to get things framed. You can add the solo designer. Of course, it's uh, David Turksy, right? Artists, you can add in all this information. Ideally, you are searching to put in that information, right? 
uh, who is the graphic designer? Did you know it's actually Wolfgang Kramer? Probably not. But you can add all this in instead of just writing at the bottom. If you go down to note to admin and write all that in, that is harder to approve than something like this where you actually put in the information and now we know that's there. You can add in whatever. You search here, you add in expansion, you do all this type of stuff. This is for the main game listing, not the specific version. If you wanted to do the version, then you go to the version and hit corrections up in the right hand corner here. And now you're making corrections or submitting corrections only for this particular version. Right? The product code is incorrect. You can add in this number in here, right? or the length. It's actually uh, 20,000 inches. It's very big. Right? You can approve all those. Change the language. Change the release date. You can add in all this type of thing here. It's actually going to be a spiel release. Right? So you can add in all those details. You can also include a note. You can say I'm, you know, I'm working with the publisher, or I found uh, a listing on the retail site, whatever it is. You can type that here, so we have some idea of why this information is correct. Why are you submitting this? How do we trust you? Over time, we see people submit things over and over again. We research them, and then approve corrections. And the more we see someone do this, the more we understand. Yes, they know what they're doing. They have information, they do research, they care about everything being accurate, kind of the way that I am where I get very picky sometimes and try to make everything as correct as possible. And here we go. I have not submitted those corrections. We're all good here. I think that's it, right? Hmm, all this other stuff will come in time. I'll have to do other videos to talk about that. Yeah. And there's two lessons when I meant to do only one, which is possibly bad, makes this video look longer and more involved than it actually is. And of course, me talking a lot does not help. I tend to talk a lot. I'll just leave it there and say I'm done. Now you know about submitting games, you know about submitting corrections to the BGG database. We'd love to have whatever information that you know about added to the database, make it as correct as possible so all of our fellow gamers can find out everything they wanna know about whatever it is. That's the goal. Let people find things and hopefully it matches what they want or they know they don't want it or whatever it is. All that information is there for whatever purpose people want to use it for.